No, none of these things will make this parking meter work. It takes a nickel. It takes money. It takes money, too, to buy the things in this furniture store. Like a new desk or a new bed. Sometimes it takes more money than we have. You just can't trade the bubble gum and the marbles in your pockets for the furniture in this store. Now, sometimes things can be traded. You might be able to trade a piece of bubble gum for a ride in a friend's racer, if you happen to have a friend with a racer who wants a piece of bubble gum. But trading doesn't always work. You may be willing to trade some of that bubble gum for the glass coffee maker to give your mom for her birthday. But the man in the hardware store just may not be interested in that gum. That's why money was invented. It's easier for everyone to exchange money for the different things they want. The world is filled with all sorts of things that you can get with money. You could even exchange money for one of these trains, if you had enough. But do you have that much money in your bank at home? Well, you have some. And where did you get that money in the first place? From mom and dad. That's one place you get it from. This is money you were able to save from your weekly allowance. For this allowance money, perhaps you're expected to do certain extra things, like helping with groceries, or helping to keep the garage neat. This money you got for helping take care of your neighbor's lawn this summer. And with this birthday card from Aunt Clara, you got still more money. A dollar, just for being one year older. But where did they get the money to give you? Well, Aunt Clara is paid money for the time she spends and the work she does teaching school. Other people get their money for doing other things. The dentist is paid for his special knowledge about our teeth. The baker for his special skill in baking bread. Many people are paid for selling things. But whatever kind of work people do, they trade their time and their skills for money. And then they trade that money for the different things they want or need. So Tom's allowance money from his dad is part of the money his dad earns for the work he does. The money Tom gets from his neighbor for helping with the lawn is part of the money his neighbor earns for the work he does selling cars. Part of the money Aunt Clara gets for teaching school, she sends to Tom as a birthday present. But when you put it all together, you still can't buy everything you want. Wouldn't it be nice if things were different? 
Wouldn't it be nice if your allowance were bigger? Wouldn't it be nice if your neighbor paid you more for taking care of his lawn? Wouldn't it be nice if all your relatives sent you money for your birthday? But these things don't usually happen. Why not? Well, let's take Tom's dad as an example and see why not. He gets just so much money each week for the work he does. This is his paycheck, which he will exchange for that money. Dad puts some of that money in a bank. Then he can write checks of his own to pay other people for things his family needs. Some of the most important things he pays for are clothes for his family. And food. Sometimes there are medicines to buy and doctor bills to pay. Electricity for the house costs money. And the house itself costs money. And so does gas for the family car. Some of the money Tom's dad earns is used to pay taxes. Taxes from many people pay for big things like streets and schools, things that are too expensive for one family to pay for alone. And finally, part of the money dad earns is put away and saved. Dad may need some of this money later for things he didn't plan on, like an expensive repair job on the car. After dad has paid the money for all the things the family needs and put some away in savings, he pays allowances. Is there any money left over after that? Not enough for dad to buy that new car he wishes he could have. Not enough to buy that new bed and desk and lamp for your room. But perhaps if he saves the money that's left over each week for enough weeks, then there will be enough to buy one of these more expensive things. But which should it be? The boys are getting too big for their old beds. And a desk would make it easier to do schoolwork. But then, wouldn't it be nice to have a shiny new car? Dad doesn't have enough money to buy everything he wants, just as you may not have enough money to buy everything you want. So you have to make choices, and you want to make these choices carefully. You don't have enough money to buy the most expensive train in the store. But then you could choose one that's less expensive, but almost as good. Then you could have your train and still have money left over to go back to the hardware store and get the glass coffee maker for your mother's birthday. By not spending all your money on just one thing, you can have money left over for other things you may want or need. There are more things in the world to buy than most people have money for. So, choices have to be made. Different people, of course, will choose different things. But learning to use money means learning to make the best possible choices for your family and for you.